Hey everyone, um, I'm Andrew Parker. I'm a general partner with Spark oh. Capital. We're a venture capital firm uh, headquartered in Boston with offices in New York and San Francisco. Um, I uh, have the privilege of being an investor in Quantopian. Uh, John Fawcett here is the uh, CEO and co-founder of Quantopian. We've been working together for, I guess it's three years now. Yeah. Which yeah. is great. Yeah. And uh, so we thought the uh, best way to tell the story of Quantopian would be uh, uh, kind of a fireside chat format, uh, run through some questions, which hopefully will, will get you guys up to speed on what they do and tell you a little bit of this, the kind of entrepreneurial story here. And uh, so, Foss, would you like to introduce yourself to the audience? Sure. Uh, well, my name is Foss, um, and uh, this is my second company that I built uh, here in Boston, um, Massachusetts native, so i um, very happy to, to, to be here, and I love this event. I uh, see so many people coming together to talk about fintech, which is something I'm very passionate about, uh, and I like to say I've been, been uh, doing since before it was cool. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, should I talk a little bit about um, the past, how we get to know each other, or? Yeah, sure, why not? Um, so I think uh, kind of the, the beginning of all this was my last company, was, like I said, was here in Boston, another fintech company. And I'd, I'd been an analyst at a hedge fund, a uh, long short equity hedge fund, uh, which might be like the greatest out of fish, uh, fish out of water story uh, <laughs> ever. Um, and I just uh, was very frustrated at the hedge fund because there was no kind of feedback loop. You know, you would you'd make an investment decision. Uh, it was all fundamentally based in theory, but uh, a, lot of, a lot of, let's say, gut uh, investing. Um, and you know, I was I was kind of like an nerd uh, engineer type, uh, and I was writing a lot of software on the side, uh, and decided uh, with the help actually of the portfolio manager there is a fantastic guy to um, spin off a software company. Uh, and I remember like Friday I was an analyst at the hedge fund, and then you know like the following Saturday morning I was uh, starting this company. <laughs> and it was like the greatest Saturday of all time. I was on my couch. I was co I was just so happy. Uh, so I knew immediately I'd made the right decision. Um, and at the time, I was like, oh, you know, I'll spend like three years doing this and get some experience. That'll be great. So nine years later, um, I was working on the same company we had sold uh, in in '08, and um, I had actually loved the markets. You know, it's just this wondrous machine that you, you know everyone all over the world is competing to discern price, and you're a part of that, and everything matters. Every news story matters, um, and the the companies themselves are fascinating. I just really hated picking stocks. It just felt ridiculous. <laughs> um, so nine years after I was an analyst at a hedge fund, I met a quant for the first time. Uh, and this guy was an actual rocket scientist. Uh, he was a physicist. Uh, he, had, he had transitioned into finance after finishing uh, like some postdoc research. And he was explaining you know, how, he did, how he did his investments. And it was just everything I loved about software and data um, and, and also everything I loved about the markets. He was still investing. He was still passionate about discerning value. Uh, it was just that he was doing it in a way that was systematic and repeatable, and there was a feedback loop where he could improve. Mm -hmm. um, so I just fell in love with that whole idea, and um, I started writing a back tester, uh, which is sort of like the first big thing. If you talk to anyone who's ever written, any, any quants in the audience? Okay, have you written a back tester if you're a quant? Right. Everybody, everybody who's a quant has written at least one back tester. So that was the first thing I did, um, and that really just opened the door in this whole. Uh, this whole world. That's um, great. That I fell in love with. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's an awesome introduction. Um, so, what what is Quantopian's mission? You know, what is what is the product that you've really built to kind of push this forward? Um, our mission is uh, really twofold. Uh, firstly, uh, we want to empower people all over the world who have both the analytical mind and also an interest in investing uh, to do it in a way that makes sense to them, to to be systematic and quantitative about it. Uh, so, it's really about. Uh, finding and equipping what we call independent quants. And that might be people who are aspirational, people who are already professional, people who are in a different industry, or maybe they're in academia. Um, but you know, think, think in terms of uh, uh, abstractions and models and, and about everything that they do, uh, and including finance and investing. Uh, and then the second thing is a, uh, you know, there's, I think it's interesting the way the media covers asset management uh, and trading. So like whenever I say I'll go trading, uh, people are like, oh, high frequency. Yeah. So right. we don't we don't do high frequency trading. Um, but uh, you know, there's so much scrutiny of high frequency and what's happening at that level of the market, which is really like the atomic level, uh, you know, the exchange level, um, and uh, not really a lot of media coverage about asset management and portfolio construction. And on the one hand, 
trading uh, is uh, there are some scary parts of the story. It's a very like complex system with a lot of emergent behaviors that we may not totally understand. Um, but at least it's mostly or fully automated, right? Yeah. Very, very highly automated uh, part of the world. Probably the most automated thing that's ever existed. Uh, and then portfolio construction, which literally, you know, multi, multi billion, or really trillions and trillions of dollars depend on these decisions at the, uh, uh, at the portfolio uh, construction level. Incredibly manual, yeah. just incredibly manual. I mean, there's, there's almost nothing that exists that's that manual still. Um, and so I think it's outrageous that that gets so little attention uh, and so, uh, so um, few products devoted to improving that part of the world. So I think the, the second natural part of our mission is once we have all of this talent uh, as part of our community, providing them with a platform to produce investment strategies that we can then provide uh, to end investors and just completely integrating the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, in line with that mission, um, if uh, some of the audience logged into Quantopian today, what would they see? What they would see is first is the community. So the very first thing we introduce you to is the community of, of independent quants that we've amassed from around the world. That's very, very global, um, very active community. Um, and the nature of that community is extremely open. Uh, so we've modeled it after uh, open source communities uh, and to the point where uh, users can and they actually do share complete algorithms into the community. You can read the source code. You can see the back test. You can uh, clone it, run it yourself. So that's really the first, uh, the first impression. Uh, and then kind of as you dig deeper, um, sort of starting with that cloning step, uh, you can get into the integrated development environment. You can write a little bit of Python code or modify an algorithm and run a simulation historically. Uh, you can also uh, simulate that against live data. And then if you want, you can connect to um, interactive brokers and actually trade it uh, with your own money. Uh, so there's a kind of a pipeline that we, that we take you through for creating an algorithm. Wild. So you um, open with the community, right? Yep. right? Right away you see community of quants who are right. interacting with each other. Kind of it's, the opposite of the industry. Yeah, right? un right. totally uncharacteristic, right? Yep. I mean, you know, quants are, or I guess Wall Street broadly seems very insular, very closed. Yep. What, what made you think like a community-based approach was going to work here? Yeah, so actually um, I fell in love with this feeling. I, I started thinking like, what, what could I do? You know, can I start a hedge fund of my own? And I started thinking about what that would entail. I'd have to recruit researchers. Uh, so I went out and started talking to quants to try to <laughs> recruit them to my to my um, my hedge fund that didn't exist yet, and um, you know it was extremely difficult to get people to talk to me, um, and I started asking about what they do, and a lot of them would tell me uh, the, the the steps that were involved, and backtesting was one, so I, I got excited about that, um, and wrote this backtester, and the kind of amazing thing that happened is when I had the backtester and I would show up and I was like, this is my backtester, this is how it, how it works, and I open sourced it, and you, you can see the code. And in my mind, I open sourced because I, had, I wasn't sure I was doing it right. You know? And I wanted, I wanted the scrutiny of, of more sophisticated people to look at it. So the quants I was meeting with, uh, one, I had done some of the work that they were accustomed to, so I was kind of a member of the tribe in a way. Uh, and then secondly, there was just obviously this vacuum. Because if you imagine, you take people who are classically trained scientists who believe in you know, peer review um, and, and the scientific method and openness, uh, and then you put them in this environment where they're not allowed to talk to anyone about their work, they, they don't like that. That does not fit with the personality of a person who's good at, at uh, modeling the world in any way. Um, and so showing up and saying, hey, I open source this thing, all of a sudden I started to get a lot of feedback about uh, the, the requirements of a back test and how it should work and problems I would encounter and data I should look at. And it just gathered momentum. And then uh, you know, I, I decided to put it on the internet so that anyone could reach it and, and start submitting to uh, algorithms to then be simulated. And uh, it just gained this momentum that I think everyone, <laughs> everyone involved is surprised. The quants who are professionals who are giving me advice, I think are surprised that they're doing it. Uh, they're surprised that I'm there with this open source, uh, this open source product. Um, the people who, from the outside are surprised that there's uh, members of the community who really know what they're talking about um, and can provide very, very good advice. Um, but I think you know, nature abhors a vacuum. There was just this missing piece in the ecosystem that everyone was recreating the same technology over and over again. Um, and we kind of found our way to this split where we're radically open about ourselves and our own intellectual property. So you know, we open source a lot of uh, code, including the backtester. 
um, and we're committed to, to continuing that trend. But then we're very respectful of the IP that our users create, uh, and we're, we keep that uh, extremely secure and safe and private unless they decide to share it. Um, and we're continually, I think, pleasantly surprised and delighted that people want to share. They really do. Are they sharing their like billion dollar trading strategy, or what, what's the kind of stuff they share? Uh, the number one reason to share is I tried to do something, it didn't work. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I have a problem. Sure. I'm totally. stuck. Right. It, it, it yeah. makes sense. You know, we don't. We don't have any rules about what you share or why. Um, the number two reason is I did this and it's amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's really really interesting. Uh, and we also uh, the product has grown now so that there's um, a research environment. So uh, I started with the back tester, which is sort of like 90% of the infrastructure you have to build. It's about 10% of the work that people do. 90% um, of the work people do is in research, where they're looking at raw data and uh, usually visualizing. So we've built this amazing research environment. Um, which is being used in classes. You know, there's a pilot here at MIT Sloan. There's a um, pilot at Stanford. Uh, it's a really great environment uh, for you know visualizing your data, integrating data, um, and researching investment strategies. Has access to the back tester. You can look at the results of your your back tests and your live trades. Uh, so it's a great analysis platform, and that has also become. Um, very popular for sharing because uh, in addition to having a result you can kind of tell a story and lead people through it um, and that's a really interesting step because it's not necessarily disclosing you know the core money-making IP it's it's about the process or the, the tools that you're building yeah yeah uh, that's great so um, uh, you know, you, you took us uh, to the inspiration yep. when you're sitting on your couch and you're writing code. And, yep. and uh, what was like the genesis story? What did the first year or so of this company look like? And uh, so there was like a, I had this cushy job. We had been acquired, and you know, I loved the team I was working on. I like I like the product and the customers a lot. And uh, I just couldn't stop thinking about having um, you know this this system and then giving the system away to the world. You know, once I thought of that. Because in meeting these quants and talking to them about how it worked, the interesting dynamics of it were you, know, you make an investment strategy and then there's alpha decay. So the strategy gets tired and gets less, less uh, profitable over time, almost no matter what kind of strategy it is. It's just a matter of like, what the slope is for the decay. Um, and uh, as a result, all of these investment firms that trade systematically uh, are on a treadmill where they have to keep producing new, new, new uh, algorithmic content. And uh, I found that fascinating just because, you know, uh, there's a production cycle and, and you need to be efficient. So I was thinking a lot about the experience of producing one of these and what the steps are. And then I started thinking about scaling it out. And one of the things I noticed is you know, the, the largest, most successful uh, quantitative hedge funds have the largest research departments, uh, which is correlation. But um, <laughs> so I started thinking about, well, there must be something to scaling out these, these uh, research endeavors. And so then I started thinking a lot about what would be the most scalable possible solution for producing uh, strategies and researching uh, the space. Uh, and if you think about it that way, it's obvious, right? You use the internet, you get as many people as possible to show up, you eliminate all friction. Um, and so I just had this idea that if there was uh, a platform you know, on the web with no setup, no you know, compiling of, of uh, Fortran code to do your matrix multiplications, just you know, immediate uh, gratification where you'd show up and try your idea. Um, that like a lot of the really smart people I knew would like to do that, uh, and and uh, could produce some incredible, um, incredible ideas. And uh, I think my advice, if you're an entrepreneur, when you have that feeling where you just can't stop thinking about it, um, that's a good sign that you probably should pursue it because you're going to be satisfied just just. Uh, Pursuing, you know, kind of single-mindedly that goal to find out, like, will this work? And um, so I had like a month where I was like struggling with this, couldn't decide if I should do it. And finally, one night, my wife was like, "You just, you have to quit your job and do this, so you will shut up." Because I can't, I can't talk to you. You know, I, I love the idea, but I can't talk to you about backtesting anymore. Um, so uh, that that week, I quit my job, and uh, I was so excited to get going. I didn't, I didn't have like a place to work or anything like that. And I ended up in my shed, um, you know, kind of like between my lawnmower on like a workbench, uh, coding away on my my uh, backtest on the first website. And um, I was just like so excited to be doing it. Kind of every, everybody I met was like, "Oh, I'm working on this thing. Can I show you?" And then uh, people uh, you know that I admired, like Marie Chan, you know, written a bunch of books that I read and had a nice blog. I just like reached out to him and, and showed him. And uh, 
that turned into you know a couple of blog posts, and that turned into a bunch of users. And then by that time, it was like November, and it was getting like pretty cold in the shed. So um, <laughs> I started thinking about trying to create like a real company around this idea. Uh, and so I, that's when I went out and tried to raise capital. Uh, and met you, uh, and then uh, we got funded. I think it was January of twelve. Yeah, that sounds right. And then, in the greatest victory in the history of uh, Boston technology recruiting, I got my CTO to move from San Francisco back to Boston. Um, <laughs> so, uh, where he had moved one year prior. That's right. Yep. Um, so, uh, and his wife has like almost forgiven me. Um, so. Uh, and, and that really is when we uh, turned to the Jets, and, and uh, he he started properly creating all the all the things I had coded up. That's amazing. Yeah. So you got um, some initial seed funding, then you, yep. you recruited your CTO. You know, it's still a little bit of like a um, there's some blog posts, there's some initial proof, yep. but it's it's still like solidly in your mind an idea. What was the moment during the course of that arc where you kind of realized, wow, this is actually coming together, like this is blossoming? Yep. Um, so we, it was actually, we made it through the uh, seed cycle and then raised our A. Uh, so we did our A round, that was what, 13? Okay. Um, in the fall. And uh, one of the things that happened right after we, uh, was during the seed, we went to um, a Python conference, PyCon, uh, which is awesome. Um, and we were like on Startup Alley. And uh, wondrous array of like incredibly intelligent people from all different uh, domains and like really like a good cross-section of the people we wanted to attract and at that time I was like I wonder if these guys are going to be interested in doing this and um, the overwhelming response from that kind of face-to-face -face interaction with a couple hundred people was when are you guys going to let me live trade this mm. um, which was a big realization for me because you know I just you, as you get to know the persona of your user you don't know like are you know do they are they just academically interested? Or there's like right. a burning desire right. to invest capital this way. So it turns out burning desire to invest capital was there, um, and it's sort of like the the competitive atmosphere I think was really attractive to people. So we realized kind of late in the sea that we needed uh, to have live trading to really be a complete product. Um, and it was right after we closed the A round that we launched uh, live trading, and. Um, it was like December, we started trading our own account. We had some sort of friends and family accounts. Uh, and then in January, it just started to really take off in terms of the um, what we call assets, algorithmically, mm -hmm. algorithmically directed assets, or ADA. Uh, it really started to take off that month. And um, it was, you know, we had, we had this incentive in place finally where people, you know, because what we were asking people to show up at our website and do was not like, like a picture. You know, yeah. it's spend hours building right. something of value. Uh, which is a little bit unusual in, uh, in web apps. Um, and so in the absence of that incentive, it was, it was just not as compelling for people. And then all of a sudden, when they knew that they could, they could realize that uh, potential, they really started pushing it hard. So that's when it was sort of like the first really, really strong you know, signal that this is what people want to do and they're excited about it's creating an exciting this moment. Way. That's great. Yep. So like the, the community is blossoming there. And then how do you build a business? You know, what, what's the business that's going to actually power right. all this? Right. Um, that was probably the toughest phase so far. I'm sure there's like other challenges ahead, but there was, um, you know, just getting to the product. We had this big, big product footprint, uh, which again, very unusual. So even though costs for developing applications of all kinds have plummeted, it's a very mature uh, endeavor. And so there's a very big product footprint uh, that we need, needed to achieve, even just to, to kind of um, get the MVP in place. Yeah. Um, and, uh, so that took so much, uh, I guess, basically force of will <laughs> just to get that to happen. Uh, that uh, when we were done, it was like, okay, you know, like now what? What kind of who we're going to be? And um, it's an in it was an interesting problem because there's uh, so many different ways that we could we could monetize, and there's like three categories that we considered. Um, one was to become a broker dealer and and, and uh, collect transaction fees and essentially commissions. Um, looking at that. Commissions are on a trend uh, towards zero. Hopefully, they'll get there. Um, and you know, that's uh, was not not an uh, easy business to to enter. Um, the other was a platform business where we just charge charge a fee. Um, and then the asset management business, which was like the the dream from the beginning. Um, but we just didn't know what we were going to get in terms of the algorithms and whether it would actually be you know a product that I'd be comfortable selling to investors. Um, and so there was this long period waiting for the algorithms to season and for our ability to evaluate them uh, to ramp up. Um, 
which was really painful as an entrepreneur because I just didn't know which of those we were going to end up doing. Yeah. Um, and I definitely like to know what the goal is and be working on it. Um, so what we've, where we've ended up is that uh, we're really excited about the quality of the algorithms that are being produced. Uh, and I'm actually more excited about the first and second derivative of the quality. I, mean, I think that we've uh, got in place the incentive structure and some knobs that we can turn to, to keep increasing the, the volume and the quality, mm -hmm. which is really cool. Um, and so the asset management business is the way we're going to do it. And the way that that works is we'll raise money from limited partners, you know, people with what I call the investment problem, which is you need to plan for the future and you have a bunch of money. Yeah. Uh, you need to figure out what to do with it. Uh, and those are some of the most important institutions in, in the world. Um, and we'll provide an investment service to them. And then the interesting bit is that we'll charge a, a, a performance fee or a carry, and we're going to split that with the author. Uh, so the people from all over the world who are producing this intellectual property that then manages assets for LPs will, will uh, be able to make their living. And so until you've raised that fund, how are you um, sourcing the algorithms today, right? If there's yep. a clear long-term incentive, they'll get to participate in the uh, economics, but, but how does it work right now? Um, so the way that it works right now is we, we uh, run monthly contests. Uh, there's really like two, two uh, big incentives in place. One is to uh, simply trade your own capital, which a lot of people do. Okay. Uh, so they'll, they'll develop an algorithm, they'll test it, and they'll trade their own, their own money. Um, or maybe they're like a small firm or like a nascent firm. They haven't, they haven't formed yet or they have friend, friends and family capital that they're trading. Um, and so you know, there's no cost for them to get started, essentially, and, and that's a, um, a, a great fit. And then uh, that's a relatively small number of, of people that have pretty significant capital that they're willing to invest this way and the ability to create these, these strategies. We have a much, much larger pool of people who have the talent and, and uh, uh, sort of like the intellectual horsepower uh, but haven't done it before you know, and they're kind of, kind of aspiring. And what they really need is um, clear guidelines for like what is a quality algorithm. So we set up these contests that we run every month. Uh, each month we, we pick a winner. Uh, the contest ranks all of the algorithms that have been submitted um, based on how we would score them for the fund inclusion. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the winner of the contest uh, is given an account of our money, so $100,000 $100, of Quantopian money that we then run with uh, their algo, and they get to keep 100% of the upside that they produce over that's six months. a great months. deal. And uh, yeah, it is. And um, that's been amazing because it just closed the feedback loop for us and for the quant. So now that we're like evaluating and deploying and seeing their returns and they're doing the same, uh, it's really accelerated everything. Yeah. Can anyone participate in the contest? Yeah, it's totally wide open. Cool. Yeah. Great. Um, Oh, I see an exclamation mark. That sounds like stop. <laughs> yeah. All right, so uh, at this point, let's um, open up to Q&A to the audience, and uh, hopefully you can fill in where, where I left the gaps. <laughs> yeah, please, up front. I have a question. Um, how did you guys come up with the name? The did name? You know, Utopia for quantity nerds? No? Yeah, so, um, well, first of all, I thought, uh, you know, quantitative utopia. <laughs> but uh, Quantopia was actually already registered. Um, so <laughs> then I was like, oh, the people of Quantopia would be called Quantopians. Uh, so, but you forgot the S. Well, then I was like, <laughs> but then it's also an adjective. So, uh, and then, of course, I said to myself, this won't last. I'll probably change it later. But it lasted. That's great. <laughs> Please. Yes, uh, you already uh, touched on the customer acquisition at the early stage, but could you go a little bit more in detail? Because this is really the hardest part for any community to really yep. to take off. Yep. What really? What did you do concretely? Um, so the, uh, the, the the acquisition of the uh, community uh, is, you know, I, I feel like we were waiting for like a magic moment, you know, some spark to happen for the for the community, and there's no. There was no one thing that we did um, that made it happen. It just, uh, as we progress, you have to constantly adapt, both to the size of the community you have and to, to finding new channels to attract um, community members. And uh, you know, there's just like a long list of things that we tried and didn't work, and a, a, a list of things that we tried and did work. Um, I think the the first thing, and probably like the guiding principle, was. We were really, really committed to having a community and being open. Uh, and we treated it as a first class uh, business goal from the beginning. So we've always been tracking you know, how many people do we have, how many are participating in the community, how many are sharing algorithms as compared to making algorithms. 
And I think uh, that got us in the right mindset to keep trying uh, different things. And um, as you go, you know, there's a stage where, you know, I used to wake up at, you know, five in the morning, run downstairs and check to see if anyone had posted on the forums and then immediately write like a two page answer explaining anything I could uh, to them just to, to breathe life into the, into the community and also to sort of set the tone that we wanted for our community, which was to be, um, for quant communities, uncharacteristically uh, polite and kind and encouraging. <laughs> um, and uh, there was a, a couple of like watershed moments, uh, one of which was, you know, I get up at five in the morning, ran downstairs, and someone else had already answered all the questions. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, that the, the community members are starting to connect with one another instead of just with our company. Um, and that was, that was a, a wonderful moment. Um, and then uh, the, the next thing that sort of happened is the community content started to get more and more sophisticated, and it became the big draw for other users. Um, and so I think what's interesting about our experience is we provided this tool and then we made it easy to share. And so there have been some really phenomenally interesting um, uh, uh, algorithms and, and research pieces that have been shared through Quantopian that have generated uh, really dramatic uh, traffic for us, as well as new registrations and, and probably just as importantly, uh, engaged our audience. So that's, uh, that's all the time we have for questions or unless you have closing remarks. That's great. Thank nice. you all Thank you for so much. taking the time. Appreciate it.